Rajasthan Foundation of India in association with Rashtri Seva Bharti. Uh, we have covered most of the topics related to our country, which matters to the children, which talk about the CNCP or CCL or any kind of the child in the country. Uh, today we are going to understand or discuss the things in our subcontinent countries like Sri Lanka. What are the child welfare systems in Sri Lanka? What are the orphanages system, how they are working, how they are planning? All the things we are going to talk in detail today. So to talk detail, we have Lynn Stainer with us, having a very vast experience in the child welfare system. MBE and FRSA a award, which is given by the Queen, uh, something similar to the President Award in our country. A founder and chief executive of Their Future Today, United Kingdom, a volunteered in an orphanage during tsunami in Sri Lanka, and since then. She has been working with the Sri Lankan government, Sri Lankan orphanage system. So I request Lynn to put forward the, uh, your words on the subject, the system, the orphanage system and the welfare system in the Sri Lanka. Over to you, Lynn. Please go ahead. Good, mor uh, good morning and good, after, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, and thank you very much for inviting me to join in your conference today. Um, we in England are constantly thinking of our friends in India um, and the suffering which is happening at the moment with the, with the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, our thoughts are, are with you all, as with um, all those who are facing these challenges all over the world um, and I am mostly involved um, as you know with with Sri Lanka um, so I would like to um, share my uh, PowerPoint if I can um, you have to forgive me because I haven't I haven't actually done it on um, I haven't done it on uh, Google Meet before we I usually use Zoom, which is similar but slightly different. Um, so please excuse me while I'm a bit slow at actually trying to get this up for you. Um, all right, so I hope you may be able to see what we have here. Um, So, can you see anything? Yes, yes, it's there on the screen. Ah, so you can see it, but I can't see it. Okay, yeah. I can see it now. So, <clears throat> I, can you see it too? <clears throat> okay, yes, we so, can see. so I. I <clears throat> Okay, great. That's great. So, um, did you want me to speak slowly so that you needed to translate or? or should I just no, continue? No. You you go ahead with your speed. I'll translate the entire things after your lecture. Once you finish, okay, I'll fine. translate. Okay. okay, that's great. Okay. Um, so, first of all, I'd like to just say that um, I've worked in Sri Lanka for the past 20 years, um, and I'm based in the UK. Um, and I'm one of an increasingly large number of concerned citizens around the world campaigning to um, end the era of orphanages. Um, and I will tell you a bit more about our work and our model for change in a few minutes. Um, so it's hard to believe, but over a hundred years ago, um, from when orphanages began in in the in the mid sort of 18th century a um, hundred years ago there was a child rescue campaign to actually to actually determine the fact that uh, children that orphanages weren't the best places for children that actually families were the best option and here we are over a hundred years later um, where where really very very little has changed. I mean, obviously in the UK, Australia, and USA, we we no longer have orphanages, um, but there is an increasing um, number of children around around the world um, who are still who are still suffering in in these times. 
So in Sri Lanka, there are a number of um, child laws in place, and um, I'll just run through what these child laws are. So it's they have, they have the Prevention of Domestic Violence Act, um, which main objective is to eradicate domestic violence. Um, it's a measure that uh, is to be taken against any domestic violence that may or may not be physical or mental. Um, and an injunction against violence may be sought by filling out an application form as provided for in this act and by submitting it to the magistrate's court of justice in the field concerned. And it can help not only children and women, but also party, any party affected by domestic violence. There's a Penal Code Amendment Acts of 1995, um, 1998 and 2006, um, which defines a person, a child as a person under 18 years of age for offences of obscene publications relating to children, um, Section 286A, Cruelty, Section 308A, Sexual Exploitation, Section 360B, Trafficking, Section 360C and Grave Sexual Abuse. Section 365B. The minimum age of marriage of 18 years and the age of 16 years for statutory rape create an anonymous situation, especially concerning conse consensual sexual relationships. Girls under <clears throat> 16 years and boys under 18 years of age. Girls under 16 years and boys over 18 years of age. Girls over 16 years but below 18 years and, and boys below 18 years. Um, and lastly, girls over 16 years but below 18 years and boys over 18 years. In the first two instances, the boy is liable to be prosecuted for statutory rape and marriage is also not permitted until both parties reach 18 years. In the third and fourth instances, the boy will not be prosecuted for rape but is in a position to marry when both reach the ages of 18 years. So there's the Victims and um, Witnesses Protection Act, um, number four of 2015, um, which the newly established National Authority recently enacted for the protection of victims and witnesses of crime, and provides that when determining whether a victim is a child is a victim, the child's maximum benefit should be considered. It's, state, it's stated that the recipient has the rights to receive Moreover, to take measures to protect the child's rights, particularly those of child victims of crime, in a manner that is equally fair and respectful to the victim of a crime as defined in Article 25, 3, 3, 1 thereof, it is stated that the maximum benefit of child witnesses should be guaranteed. So, the child on child labour, the Penal Code Amendment Act number 29 of 1998 defines the use of children under the age of 18 as a grave offence and imposes penalties on the following methods. Use of children for begging, hiring of children for sexual intercourse, employment, use of children for the transportation of limited goods um, such as toxins, opium and other drugs. Um, there is also under the corporal punishment section four of Circular 12, stroke 20, 2016, which reportedly prohibits the use of corporal punishment in government schools, but this does not apply to all schools and has not been confirmed in legislation. So the National Child Protection Act, number 50, established the National Child Protection Authority for Child Protection. Its objectives uh, are to pre prevent child abuse, protect and treat abused children, and develop and coordinate policies and actions to prevent child abuse. So we start with the divisional child protection officer, <coughs> who is, <coughs> excuse me, under the district psychosocial officer, who is under the dris district child protection officer, who then answers to the National Child Protection Authority. So the duties of National Child Protection Officer is to coordinate all aspects of the prevention of child abuse and the protection of promotion of child rights, the acceptance of public com complaints with regards to child abuse, 
and refer such complaints to the appropriate authorities whenever necessary. Advising the government on formulating a policy on the prevention of child abuse and the protection as well as treatment rehabilitation of victims of such child abuse. Advising the government on what actions should be taken in protecting child children of abuse. Whenever necessary, recommending legal administrative or amendments when implementing the national policy on the prevention of child abuse. The Department of Probation and Child Care Services, um, the Probation Commissioner, Assistant Pro Probation Commissioner and departmental probation officers are appointed under the Probation and Child Care Services Act No. 42 of 1944, Articles 15.1, 15.2 and 17.1. So the Child Rights Promotion Officer Divisional Level is under the Probation Officer District Level and he is answerable to the Probation and Child Protection Service Commissioner Provincial Level under the Probation and Child Protection Service Commissioner National Level. The duties of probation officer is to provide mental and physical protection, rehabilitation and reintegration to orphaned, abandoned, helpless, abused and children referred by court orders, guardianship and protection of institutionalised children, and providing temporary guardianship and facilities for children referred by court orders. Providing school and vocational education to children of child development centres and government centres, creating a background for the socialisation of those children by conducting various workshops, cultural and religious festivals. Providing jobs for institutionalised children, providing the necessary facilities for institutionalised young adults to get married when they reach the appropriate age. So the institutions under the Department of Probation and Child Care they are remand homes, certified schools, safe houses and receiving homes. In remand homes, um, they are the detention centres established to house children during pre-trial detention. The six remand homes in Sri Lanka are located in Panapitiya, Anuradhapura, Kitalampitiya, Ramutagala, Weralewata and Jaffna. Um, the certified schools provide systematic vocational training to children admitted to their care. There are five certified schools in Sri Lanka located in Makola, Kapitipola, Hikadua, Ranmathugula and Kondaville. The safe houses are state-run accommodation and care providing facilities for children whose court decisions are pending. And state receiving homes provide the necessary safety and protection to children temporarily or permanently unable to live with their families. There are eight state receiving homes in Sri Lanka, Prajapithi in Panadura, Rahunu in Gaul, Sujatha in Bandaruela, Abaya in Anuradhapura. Takiri in Paradenia and Amal Savena in Migalawa, Paradise in Karawita and the receiving home in Jaffna. Sorry, one second. Um, so then um, we go to detention homes, um, which are institutions established to rehabilitate destitute children over eight years of age. And currently there is only one detention home for such children in Sri Lanka located in Halpatota. Um, there are national training and counselling centres for children, um, which this facility hosts children who have been sexually abused and raped, children in underage marriages and children engaged in child labour. The facility also hosts children accused of theft, strained children and disobedient children. Um, and, a, and, a, and a proof school in Magona was established to shelter and provide psychological and physiological protection to orphaned, deserted, uh, destitute and abused children. Um, voluntary children's institutions, um, which form the majority of the CCIs in Sri Lanka. 
though they are managed by non-governmental parties, they are monitored by the DPCCS. Originally, it was not required by law to have a court order to accommodate the child in a voluntary children's institution. However, in 2008, the law was amended to make it compulsory. <clears throat> you can see here by the chart the, um, the, the process for the needy child, which um, goes through to either to the Department of Probation and Child Care Services through court order or through volunteer institution re recommended by Probation and Child Care Services, um, which then go down to Provincial Commissioner Probation and Child Care Services and then the Commissioner of the Department of Probation and Child Care Services. Um, the number of child care institutes in Sri Lanka, there is a total of 414 institutions which are located in the nine provinces. Um, in 2016, um, which was the last recorded uh, numbers by UNICEF, they reported 14,179 children. <clears throat> In national policies, we have the National Child Protection Policy, um, which is intended to ensure effective coordination amongst all organizations and actors working for the protection and development of the children of the country, um, which, which address not only protection in terms of the rights and obligations, but also general care and well-being, which will include education in the fullest sense, provision for leisure, the encouragement of creativity, and participation in social activities. It will be aimed at adults as well as children since no child lives outside the sphere of influence of adults. And then there is the National Alternative Care Policy which provides programming for children at risk of family separation and facing uh, deprivations such as child abuse, neglect, child labour, poverty, addiction, imprisonment, human trafficking, mental and physical disabilities, HIV AIDS, domestic violence, orphanhood, abandonment and displacement, etc. The policy also takes international foster care guidelines and encompasses provisions to children who are forced to live and work on streets. In this document, alternative care is defined as any care provided to a child away from his or her parental home and is further classified as family-based care with kin, foster or adoptive parents and family-like care and residential settings that resemble family environments. There's a national preschool policy, which through this national policy, the governments create the conditions um, to, to develop and regulate the preschool sector to ensure that all preschools in the country meet certain quality standards. And it will pro proactively work to make preschool education accessible to all children in Sri Lanka. And there is a foster care commission in Sri Lanka which the Commission could make recommendations and guidelines for the 34 effective implementation of the provisions under the Act, as well as specify what type of foster care is suitable to be provided by each kinship or foster carer and determine the suitability or otherwise of pr prospective kinship or foster carers. The guidelines will also include monitoring mechanisms and follow-up of the well-being of children in kinship or foster care to be implemented by social and child protection workers working with such children and their families. Furthermore, sorry, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, furthermore, um, Temporary, in, although temporary in nature, may continue to adulthood if, if necessary, but should not pr preclude either ret either return to the child's own parents or adoption. Also, the foster placement of children should be regulated by law. So, we have the mechanics of the documentation and policies in place, but there is a lack of action and a lack of knowledge. Um, so we are trying their future today in the organization which I set up after the um, Asian tsunami providing solutions to end institutionalization um, through a, a kind of a theory of change which we have been modeling over the last 15 years. And through that, we're providing education because we know abandonment is caused 
um, in, on so many occasions by parents who are lacking in education themselves, therefore don't have the means to educate um, their children or then or support their children. So we've been providing um, school books um, and uh, resources and um, other other um, things which I will tell you about in a second. Um, we've been tr transforming institutions, reuniting and strengthening families to prevent abandonment, protecting and empowering women and girl victims, and training and advocating for implementation of alternative family and foster care policy to ensure that every child has the right to grow up in a loving family and go to school. So providing education, we enable education by providing school books and resources um, three and a half thousand rural children annually. Um, we provide an early learning development centre at TFT International Preschool for up to 100 poor rural children. And then we guarantee their, um, their, their support with school books um, on, ongoing. Um, we're, tr we're working in transforming institutions um, because although we hate orphanages and we want to see an end to them, we can't ignore the children in them. Um, and that was where we started at the beginning. So we are training um, and provi providing childcare training and we're providing a, a manual which can be um, used in 25 other orphanages, um, which we will have this year. Um, and we employ house mothers um, who understand about the attachment and giving loving care to children. Um, and we're providing educational resources and vocational training for the older children, as in bakery projects, um, sewing, embroidery, um, skills training. Um, we're reuniting and strengthening families, providing pro bono lawyering, financial management and livelihood training, resources and community support for long term sustainability. And we're uh, also providing um, training in alternative family and foster care um, alongside our global partners of Centre of Excellence, of course, in India with Vasundra um, and the International Foster Care Organisation. Um, which we have been had been making huge headway up until the tsunami, uh, sorry, the pandemic hit um, in at the end of 2019, <clears throat> and uh, we were providing this this training to judges, national childcare probation services, national childcare protection authority, local commissioners, ministers, faith groups, NGOs, and universities. We're also providing now women and girls empowerment at a TFT Heartbeat Centre, which provides pro bono lawyering, safe shelter, counselling, education and skills training in a family environment, care leavers, skilled single mothers and girls who are victims of domestic violence and abuse. Um, TFT transition homes are the next stage to independent living and we have just started a new programme with that. So we say there is no such thing as a suitable institution for a child. This means no orphanages, no group homes, no institutions, only families. And um, I hope that um, that has given you an insight to um, not only our work in Sri Lanka, but um, we, and the needs in Sri Lanka, but also how their welfare system is set up. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Lynn. Don't go away. Uh, we'll have some question answers with you in the end of the session. Uh, I'll just translate into the Hindi so that people will get benefited. So Lynn ne jo baate aaj Sri Lanka ke baare mein batai ki 18vi satabdi se lagbhag 100 saal pehle ye sari cheeze pure vishwa mein start hui thi aur aaj jab hum 100 saal ke baad jab is cheez ko dekhte hain to kafi sara increase hua hai jo ki aise bacche jo ki in sari cheezon se suffer kar rahe hain. एक जो प्रिवेंशन ऑफ डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस एक्ट नंबर 34 2005 का है वहां पे पिनल कोड अमेंडमेंट एक्ट 1995 का है जो कि अपने जैसे चाइल्ड वेलफेयर कमेटी है जेजे एक्ट के तरह ही वहां पे चलता है मिनिमम एज फॉर मैरिज वहां पर भी 18 साल है और 16 साल लड़कियों की एज है कंसेंसस के लिए टू हैव सेक्सुअल रिलेशनशिप और 18 साल लड़कों के लिए है जो श्रीलंका में एक जो चेंज है हमारे देश से 
चाइल्ड वेलफेयर लॉज भी वहाँ पे ऑलमोस्ट ऐसे विक्टिम एंड वेलनेस प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट 2015 है और चाइल्ड लेबर एक्ट भी है जो कि 18 साल के वहाँ पे भी लागू होता है जैसे कि हमारे देश में है बेगरी सेक्सुअल एब्यूज और ड्रग्स के लिए भी सेपरेट कानून है उन श्रीलंका में रिमांड होम सेफ होम रिसीविंग होम जैसे हमारे यहाँ सी है वैसे ही वहाँ पे रिसीविंग होम है रिमांड होम मेरे ख्याल से ऑब्जर्वेशन होम के प्रकार ही होंगे वहाँ पे देन सर्टिफाइड स्कूल से एक नया कॉन्सेप्ट है जहाँ पे कि वो हॉस्टल टाइप की फैसिलिटीज होंगी मेरे ख्याल से जिसमें वो लोग काम करते हैं बच्चों को वोकेशनल ट्रेनिंग देते हैं और उसके साथ उनको आ, समाज की मुख्य धारा में लाने का प्रयास करते हैं नीडी चाइल्ड इज अ वर्ड विच इज यूज इन श्रीलंका जो हम यहाँ पे सी एन सी पी यूज करते हैं तो वहाँ पे नीडी चाइल्ड करके वहाँ पे यूज किया जाता है वो वर्ड 414 चाइल्ड केयर इंस्टीट्यूशन हैं श्रीलंका में चौदह हजार एक सौ उन्यासी जो कि इन चिल्ड्रन होम्स में रह रहे हैं ये डेटा 2016 का है जो कि यूनिसेफ ने दिया है और 2016 के बाद श्रीलंका में यूनिसेफ ने ऐसा कोई सर्वे किया नहीं तो दैट इज द लेटेस्ट फिगर विच वी है कि वहाँ पे कुल चौदह चार सौ और नेशनल चाइल्ड प्रोटेक्शन पॉलिसी भी है उनकी एक बहुत अच्छी बात है जो कि उनके पास फॉस्टर केयर कमीशन है सेपरेट जो हमारे देश में नहीं है विच आई फील दैट वी आर लेकिंग फॉस्टर केयर कमीशन अगर हमारे बनता है या एक फॉस्टर केयर के नाम पे एक अलग से ऑफिसर ही हो अगर अपने यहाँ तो फॉस्टर केयर स्कीम को भी बढ़ावा दिया जा सकता है बाकी किनसिप केयर और एडोप्शन वहाँ पे भी होते हैं सारी चीजें फॉस्टर केयर में वहाँ पर भी है सो दो तीन चीजें जो हमारे और उनके कंट्रीज की सारी बातें थी जो लिन ने बताया एंड I can say that that Budhini from from Sri Sri Lanka Lanka has also joined. <coughs> It's great that somebody from Sri Lanka was listening. Uh, so Lynn, thank you very much. Thanks once again. Uh, don't go away. We have a second speaker with us. Once we finish, we'll take the question answers with you. <coughs> uh, we just understood the child welfare schemes and the uh, rules of Sri Lanka. Now let's come to our country, the child welfare in India. Uh, mostly it is governed by the JJ Act, Justice Care and Protection 2015 Act. Uh, but if we talk about the Indian scenario, the, our system, the entire system in our country works mostly on the emotional system rather than the law system, rather than the judiciary system. Uh, the people who are working with the child welfare system in our country are the social workers, and they are supposed to take all the cases on the emotional ground. not only on the uh, uh, preview of the law only law of course the act is there we abide by that act but most of the time we try to go with the emotions of the child what they want uh, we go we try to go as per the child so section 27 28 29 30 and 31 these are the sections which talks broadly about the child welfare committee in our country what what are the appointments how do appoint what are the powers of the child welfare committee what are the roles and responsibility of the child welfare committee these are the sections which covers broadly about the jj act in our country so we'll discuss in detail about the jj system in india or the cwc in india we have girija ji with us a vast experience in the child protection uh, child right consultant Honorary General Secretary of Indian Council for Child Welfare, Tamil Nadu. She is the Managing Director of NGO Sankalp, a Regional Coordinator for Cry also. Awarded the Best Social Worker Award for the Government of Tamil Nadu. So, speak about the child welfare system in our country. I invite Girija ji. Girija ji, can you listen me? Yeah. yeah yes. Over to you. Please speak about the yeah. power, the roles, the responsibility of the Child Welfare Committee in our country. Okay. Thank you very much. Good evening to everyone. Thank you for inviting me to share my views on CWC. I was a member of the Juvenile Welfare Board just before CWC was formed, and again after this act, for five years I was with the Juvenile Justice Board as a social work member. We have been working with this department. I know we are changing names, but let's say Child Protection Services over a period of 25 years. now recently i have come out with a uh, book on jj act specifically for stakeholders in tamil so this is my background and i think i will go
given the time of 30 minutes i thought i will take the core uh, concepts and uh, indicate the what shall i say the challenges the gaps so that uh, you can understand better because the provisions are all there uh, we will start from the appointment of uh, members as you all know that it's a long process it has been uh, going through at the district level and ultimately it is the it is the government which appoints the members are you able to see my screen yes so, yes, uh, yes 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 yes, 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 yes okay sir. so the members are appointed for a term of 3 years and they should and they cannot be reappointed immediately they have to go back and if uh, if they are interested they can come back after a period of 3 years and uh, between 35 to 65 the most important thing is they have to work between 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. five days a week. Now, these are things that are there in the uh, act, in the rules, both state rules and central rules. But still, how many CWCs are sticking to this provision is the question. Do they come five days a week? And it is not on a roll, no? One person comes on Monday, another person comes on Tuesday. It's a panel. It is, we want at least a minimum of three people to sit as a panel on every day. If it is not possible, if it is after uh, five in the evening, the child can be produced before the member in their residence also. So the law has given a lot of space mainly because they want immediately to help the child and it's a panel. So once we go into the details, you will know that there are a lot of gaps between what is said in the act and what is happening in the real. And you know the chairperson as such is not given any extra powers in the act. One among them is selected as the chairperson and uh, they are a chairperson and the, all the other members are equal. So I think that is something that we should keep in mind when we are working together as a team. Now, like uh, he said, it is... Uh, only 29, 30, it starts with 27 actually. Now I want you to go back and see the first one. The act talks about the powers. What are the powers endowed on a child welfare committee? It is care, protection, treatment, development, rehabilitation, and aftercare. Now after the 2015 act, it is more so social integration and uh, promoting alternative care. The focus is always on children in need of care and protection to help them immediately so that they are removed from the uh, endangering situation. Now tell me, where does it say about punishment? Where does it say about legal process? No, the JJ Act is very, very clear. The CWC is more towards welfare. And the JJB is only, uh, let us say that more or like, like a court. It is a court magistrate, but it's again a panel. Now, if the gap in this is we somehow or the other, we say that we are, you are given magisterial powers. I'm not denying it, but the powers are there for you to care for the children, to protect children from uh, abusive situations, give them the necessary treatment, see that they develop holistically, whether you put them in foster care or whether you put them in a CCI, it doesn't matter. And more importantly, after care, what happens to them after 18 years? And if they are an orphan child, what happens? Where will he go? How will he work? How will he face the world? These are very, very important uh, um, problems or areas. When he was talking, he said the social workers are emotional no they are not emotional but they need to have a lot of empathy because you are there as a facilitative person whether a child is produced before you are running away from home or an abused child it doesn't matter your role is very 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 clear you are supposed to immediately succor send succor to her. the child whether it's a girl or a boy it doesn't matter so let us be very very what should I say, rooted in this concept of this arm of uh, the JJ Act, that is the Child Welfare Committee, the first preference is protection. 
I think we should definitely remember this. A lot of other uh, misunderstandings will uh, reduce. Now, uh, although uh, 32, uh, up to that only, the powers of the committee is mentioned in the Act. But everywhere, now where the Act talks about all these ideas, you will see the role of the committee. First comes the children's homes. One important development that has taken place uh, in recent years is compulsory registration of all CCIs. If you don't have the government recognition, you have to immediately close. And uh, how for getting first getting the recognition, they require a report from the CWC. They will have, and now uh, all children have to be produced before the committee before admitting into a CCI. Once the admissions are over, the committee is expected to visit at least two homes, two CCI, every month. So once again, you see, you are there to give certificate, or what shall I say, give a positive report so that the CCI gets recognized. That is number one. The second step is you also see the children who are admitted. You also see the children who are discharged so that you know that uh, something more is follow up and aftercare is ensured to this child. Now that is one aspect. The second is monitoring, continuously monitoring. And all the app talks about, the rule talks about a lot of minimum standards. What we need, actually what we expect from a child welfare committee is to take us from this minimum standards to standards of excellence. There is no point in having somebody and still children being abused or children being not given sufficient uh, facilities for education and development. So this is one very, very important power. And if they, the committee visits, and once again, the committee is very, the act is very clear, you have to visit as a team. No child care member, ch child welfare committee member can visit on his own. So everywhere the act is placing a block for individual persons to aggrandize. So you have to work as a team, visit, and if you think the facilities are not enough, or if you think that the children are facing some kind of abuse, or if the children confide in you during your uh, regular visits, you will have to immediately inform the collector and take steps to lock the institution and remove the children and place them where it is safer in other institutions. So this is a very, very important, actually it's a very powerful tool in the hands of the CWC. Then comes adoption and foster care. Once again, the Act has given them so much of uh, work or so much of responsibilities, I should say. The committee has to give uh, the child is legally free for adoption. Uh, children may be surrendered and the surrendered, they have to be surrendered before the committee. Or if the child is found abandoned, that again immediately to be produced before the committee, the committee to have an inquiry, have a paper notification, and then only um, give the certificate as legally free for adoption. So this is a very, very important. I know that there are a lot of things are involved in uh, this adoption process, but the committee is central because if they don't give the child is legally free. Let's say that there is somebody there and uh, they say, we did not know the mother did like this and we don't want to place or give our children for adoption. You cannot go back and you cannot give a certificate. So the report from the probation officers is very important and the role of the Child Welfare Committee is absolutely crucial. And there is the other alternative forms of child care. We have foster care. Now, once again, foster before finalizing, the parents, the prospective foster parents must be interviewed by the committee. The committee also reads or scrutinizes the report on the child and see how the child will be compatible, whether there is compatibility between the child and the foster parents. And the foster care agreement is signed by the, by the party, the CPO, and the committee. So once again, see, at least adoption is there, and we have a separate uh, CARA division to look into adoption matter. Whereas foster care is a new development which is taking place, and the role of the uh, Child Welfare Committee 
is very, very, very important. The way how you relate to children, how you relate to uh, parents, whether they come back to you for counseling, what will you say? Do what type of counseling you will say? So this is the second. All these you will see in the subsequent provisions of the Act, where the uh, committee occupies the central role. Then comes child abuse. It can be a physical abuse, emotional abuse, or sexual abuse. Physical and mental abuse, generally from places where they are working, and sexual abuse. You now you find come across increasing number of child sexual abuse. So what is the role of the committee? Once again, the role of the committee is um, welfare. You have to, if necessary, only. See, for instance, if the child has a parent, caring parent, and the, the abuse did not take place in the family, the child need not be separated and produced before the committee. The child can go back to the parents. But if the abuser is there in the family, then the child necessarily has to be removed from home and placed on the uh, CWC for placement in some home. And everywhere the committee can uh, help them to get a support person, can help, uh, can direct the police to release uh, the relief immediately. Because there is one thing which I in Tamil Nadu I know is not used that effectively at all. You can there is fund to, uh, available for immediately releasing some relief amount to the family of the abused child. So that you can uh, order the police to do it, filing complaints, taking the case faster. What you have to keep in mind is once the child, let's say that the child is produced before the committee, now you will have to, once you take the interview, that's it. You are five members, every member cannot be asking. That's why they say it should be recorded, it should be videoed. So this is an important provision that has been added on. And we need to use it. If you don't have a video recorder, the state can definitely produce. You have to demand for it. But uh, let us not go back in time and say that we will have an interview with a child every moment. So that is not possible. Or you sit as a panel and ask the child to what has happened. And also remember, it is not easy for a child to share the details of abuse to an unknown stranger. You may be the authority, you may be very well versed in uh, children's matters, still the child need not confide in you in the first setting. And you also, you are not a police, you need not inquire, you need not investigate. Our role is to counsel, give immediately, lift the blame of, uh, you know, from the child and then let her, not, let her or he not uh, be burdened with guilt. Okay, this is a group, two children, both below 18. They run away and get married. How will we treat them? Once they come back, the boy is produced as a the, um, children in conflict with law, and the girl child is produced before the committee. If the parents say that we don't want to take her home now, now the child comes to you, what would be your attitude? How will you tackle this case? And if you find that the child is also pregnant, what is the step you will take? What you will do? Who will decide? whether uh, the child has to go for a termination of pregnancy, who will sign, what are the reasons. So all these are very important legal matters. If the child has 20 weeks old fetus, then you cannot decide that. It has to go to the high court of the state to get a permission. And the warden of the CCA has to take responsibility as a guardian and sign the papers. So let us get un, I mean, into the details of the case. How will we handle the child? What is the future? Do they have a long-term plan? Then comes child labor. Child labor, mostly now up to 14 years, no child can be working. And between 14 to 18, up to 16, there is an apprentice class. So 18, that uh, act does not talk about. So once they are released from, let us say, bondage, the children are placed with you, you can initiate the proceedings, you can send a note to the collector asking him to process the other papers so that the children will be sent back and also will be given the relief amount. Then child marriage, now since COVID, the number of child marriage is increasing all over the country. So what is the role? So every state 
must have a designated social uh, worker government officer in tamil nadu it is the, the social district social welfare officer so but wherever whenever you get generally it is 1098 child line that gets the call and uh, nowadays they are also going with the dcp po uh, to either stop or to rescue the child from the marriage so what what would be your role so there are so many things which as a member of the committee you can do and you are expected to do all these things yeah now i am going to i am not going into the details of your powers because it, time is short and i don't want to rush i want you to go home and think whatever uh, is given here is relevant to your work and whether it can guide you in your work so the first is all your uh, decisions must be based on the best interest principle i can quote you this uh, i mean the mother ran away from the home with two children one boy one girl and was uh, placed in the government home and she died now the committee decided and uh, once she died the father came to claim the children and he he said who the father said i don't want the daughter i want only my son and the committee obliged by giving him returning back the son and putting this girl child in an institution tell me is this decision based on the best interest principle i can give you lot more examples every time you make an order to counsel a child or you take a decision regarding the child please pause for 5 minutes and see whether it is in the interest of the child how will you get to know whether the child is for it or not if you don't listen to the child at all so his or her opinion is absolutely necessary see for instance this child said i don't want to go home you send me anywhere but never ever return me to my family now as a child welfare member what we think we think the family is the best the mother is so upset because you are not coming and you go your mother will take care of you who is there better than a mother all the blah 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 but we never ask why this child does not want to go back home because there is a paramount the unless we listen unless they share with their real reason we cannot take a good decision okay so thirdly the government is offering so many facilities so many things are available now itself not that it is complete but it is there so you whether you know whether you have a sort of a dictionary about uh, what services are available for placement for education for vocational training what are the other schemes government scheme available are there ngos working in your area community colleges training centers so you if you know that list only or you prepare ask your po to prepare a list and keep it ready with phone number and persons in the management it will help you a lot more to take a decision a positive decision and the most important thing is treat everyone as equal whether it is a child mother who is produced before you or it is a mother who has surrendered the child because of uh, various other problems or whatever may be they are also treat them treat them as an equal person as a human being why i am seeing saying this is i have seen many a time many a time in many committees where you don't even respect them you ask their personal details in front of everybody the woman hesitates and then for that uh, we say why you are you now hesitating so this is a very very important what if the child is rescued from a brothel now in tamil nadu wherever we did police training i used to say don't ever send her back home because the pimp will be waiting for her at the bus station and will take her uh, happily so if at all you find a child be below 18 years please produce the child before the committee so you consider her as a child in need of care and protection so these are the little little things where your work can become more effective so and the other thing is you are not one independent person you are a committee you are a panel and whom all you have you have the po 
you have the dcpo you have the social worker so you will have to work as a team now recently we have been doing a study on foster care in tamil nadu and one of the things the dcpo shared with us was wherever they are close they are in a good working relationship they are able to place children in foster care this is true of every instance so whether you are whether you are uh, work i mean take so it's a team work that is even among the five members you see that there is a separation immediately so that also you will have to look at sir and then children take time i told you there is nothing written that the child should tell you the truth now every time repeatedly we make this complaint saying that these children tell lies they are not telling lies we are trying to protect themselves and uh, present a normal picture to you as far as possible so children need some time they have to start uh, having a confidence in you to share and then what is this is siblings or twins if they are there together please don't separate them i know in chennai we had one boy who was sent to the boys home and the girl who was sent to the girls home for 10 years or so they never met each other then some good social worker came went saw through the all the documents and she said why her brother is there so it is very important that uh, if there are two children they have given a space to develop together even if you are uh, placing children in foster care keep in mind that if they are brother and sister or sister you have to make extra effort and lastly i told you in the beginning also family need not be the safe place for the child yes family is the first uh, set protective space for the child agreed but not everywhere so you will have to understand that some families are different some families do not guide do not protect the children and if the child says i don't want to go back to my family you think that there is some truth in it now i am closing here you I am going to you. leave you with this. Uh... Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Girija ji. Since you are yes. leaving, uh, yes. I have I have a question with you. Somebody yes. has asked a question with you. Mm. Uh, there are cases where the family finds a child and they keep with the team, keep with them. Mm. CWC DCPU comes to know later that child is being cared by a family without any formal order. Mm. how cwc should handle these cases okay first they will have to report there is no okay. two way about it okay. and if uh, let the dcpo let the po have a report family report done how they are looking after the child and whether uh, the child is enjoying the stay with the new family and if it is you regularize you get the documents ready and you place the child in foster care with the same family maybe uh, with conditions that they will have to come and see them once a month produce a child before the committee once a month maybe for next 6 months or so so once a decision is done and it is giving good results we need not go back and annul it so it is just like one government goes the next government comes and they undo all the things that the last government did that is not like that if the move the decision has been correct the committee can endorse it and regularize it document it correctly and regularize it I mean, can you stop the presentation? Yeah. Okay. Can you stop the presentation? Let me just see. So, yeah, that's yeah. it. So, thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much, Girija, ma'am, to give a nice insight about the uh, ethical issues, the special powers, and the do's and don'ts of child welfare committee. Uh, one thing which has to be learned from all your presentation or from your uh, lecture is that we need to be unite when we are taking any decision uh, that thing need to be taken care while the bench it happens mostly that two people are going in one direction another three are going in separate yes. direction so yes. that since we all are, comes from a social background so we need to take care of all these things ma'am so thank you very much ma'am since you have to go somewhere so yes. you can leave uh, i'll continue with this tin lin sorry thank you thank you so nice thank you for giving me up thank you girja ma'am thank you yes yes thank you ma'am uh, lin can you hear me uh, lin can you hear me your mic is muted lin 
Lin, your mic is muted. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, great. Uh, there is a question. How you work now? for employment? Mm -hmm. Lin, there is a question for you. How you work for employment of house yeah. mother in UK, as you mentioned in your presentation? Could you could you get it? Um, in the UK, Lynn? we don't. How yeah, you I work can, for can, employment? Sorry, could you just re repeat the question again? You. Yeah, the question is how you work for employment of house mother. Mm. Employment of house mother. Okay, so the. Okay, so the <clears throat> the house mothers are employed locally in Sri Lanka. Um, by the by, the matron. Um, she, they will have an interview with the matron and the social um, services department. Okay. Another yeah. question. Another question. What are the reasons for children to come to orphanages in Sri Lanka? Any specific reason? Yeah. Most, I mean, mostly mostly poverty, um, homelessness, single mothers who okay. can't look after the children. Um, a lot of parents are lacking in the education themselves, so that means that they're not able to support their children. Um, there's domestic violence that mothers will put their children into orphanages because of, um, of violence to themselves and their children. It could be addiction through alcoholism, through the father and not taking care of the children so then no income for, to feed the children um for older children it can be sort of it can be family rejection um if um if a girl becomes pregnant um if it's um a problem with incest or rape within family um the the families often reject um the the girl um, so then she's made a ward of court and uh, she's put into a remand home for her protection protection um, they can it can be because um, they're running away um, some children some girls are running away from uh, mothers who are sex workers who are trying to get their girls to become sex workers and that will, and they're found on the streets um, it could be that they're actually trying to avoid child marriage, but um, they would be, you know, found on the streets yeah. um, and, and placed as wards of court. So small, small children would actually, babies and children under five would have a court order for five years. Um, and uh, the older children would have reviews of their court orders about every three, three to six months. Another question with you. Once you place the child into the orphanage system, how you review it? What are the processes to review? Like in our country, we have an individual care plan for each child. Do you have something like that in Sri Lanka? Um, they do have care plans. Um, okay. But yeah, I think it, you know, very often children get stuck in the bureaucracy. Uh, Lynn, can I can I uh, say something here? Can you talk about the immigration issue and the children coming to orphanages, which is very common in Sri Lanka, like people going to Gulf countries and leaving their children behind in orphanages, which is very common, and also and the review also system, the review system yeah. which you have, which is basically three years, so there is no review for three years continuously. They keep on continuing in their orphanages, and only after three years they review the case. So maybe you can talk about that and also how you are helping one of the orphanages by employing your own staff and supporting that. Maybe you can discuss about that. Yeah. So we, there are um, there are mothers who, I mean, you know, the situation I think in many countries is going to be far worse post-pandemic, um, pre-pandemic I'm talking about now, but... Uh, um, but mothers from the middle, uh, the mothers would would go to work um, it, as as maids um, or domestic servants in the Middle East, um, and want to leave their children in the orphanages. Um, 
or sometimes they would leave them with a single father, but then the single father can't manage because he can't work and look after the children. Um, so then they get placed in the orphanages then. Um, the, as I said, under five years, the children, the, the review should be every, um, uh, under five years, it, they, they usually are not reviewed for about five years and unless unless we might try to reunite a family and we would go to court <clears throat> with a particular um with a particular child and the process is very long and slow um, um and yeah uh, uh, but eventually um that i mean that what we found is actually knowledge is a, a great thing because with mothers of, of children uh, mothers of, of children who want to go to the middle east our our southern province commissioner now is refusing now to take is refusing to take for that children. reason for that reason okay yeah thanks, so, Lynn. thanks Lynn. Uh, yeah before I ask uh, Mr. Anil, our IT in charge for CCF headquarters, to convey the vote of thanks, I request all of you to please switch off your cameras. आप लोग अपने camera चालू कर लें, so that मैं एक picture ले लूँ media के लिए. सबके camera बंद हैं, तो it's looking very awkward. Yes, that's great. सब लोग अपना camera चालू कर लें for a second, so that मैं एक picture ले लूँ. Lin, you have Lin, make your. We want to see you. Yeah, Lin, I want to see you. Please. Switch off your camera, Lin. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, Hazari Lal ji, DP Rai ji, आप लोग camera चालू कर लें. That will be great for me. Shalini, you have to do that. Shalini, Shalini also. Shalini ji, uh, CCF India से कौन जी? Everybody, please. Hazari Lal ji. Yeah. Okay. Alka ji, ठीक है. Shalini ji, एक camera के लिए एक बस. Right, sir. Sir, मैंने एक question आपको दूसरा देख लीजिए. एक सेकंड सर मैं जिसके बाद लेता हूं अभी क्वेश्चंस लूंगा मैं ओके ग्रेट फाइन सो आई विल आस्क अनिल जी टू कन्वे दी वोट ऑफ थैंक्स फॉर आवर स्पीकर्स टुडे देन वील ओपन दिस सेशन सो दैट एवरीवन कैन डायरेक्टली कम्युनिकेट विथ लिन यस अनिल जी ओवर टू यू very good afternoon lin this is so great uh, listening you throughout the session and it was very wonderful uh, to know that uh, since uh, it has been around 20 years as you said uh, you have been associated with sri lanka and we appreciate that but but that there is a very thin line i am listening to your this interaction throughout so my job here, here is uh, to say thank you uh, so uh, thank you so much uh, lin you have been uh, well, it, it, is, it was a very great experience having you on board and uh, i think thoda sa hindi mein humko bolna padega kyunki jitne bhi listeners hain hamare aur jo bhi participants rahe hain unke liye puri koshish ki jati hai ki language ko ek barrier na banaya jaye but jahan tak koshish hum kar sakte hain wahan tak hota hai कुछ और चैलेंजेस आएंगे नेक्स्ट कमिंग सेशंस में क्योंकि हमको लैंग्वेज बैरियर नहीं बना के रखना है बट हम थैंक यू हमारी तरफ से बोलना चाहेंगे सभी लोगों को जितने जितने आज का सेशन सुना और इसको ट्रांसलेट भी किया गया लेटर ऑन यूट्यूब पे भी इसके ट्रांसलेट वर्जन जाएंगे ट्रांसलेट वर्जन भी जाएंगे तो सबका सी की तरफ से सभी को धन्यवाद बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद एंड वंस अगेन लिन सो 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 थैंक थैंक यू सो मच that you uh, logged in there was a uh, few challenges there was challenges but you managed it very nicely and we appreciate that so thank you so much thank you everyone thank you anil ji thank you very much you. salini ji ne hand raise kiya hua hai salini ji want to ask something salini ji salini uh, no sir that was my mistake okay okay no issue manish ji aapne hand raise kiya hua you want to ask something manish ji manish dubey Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Uh, I want to know uh, that uh, there is a very big uh, what I heard or what I uh, learned from some uh, books that there is a child labor is a big problem in Sri Lanka. How Sri Lanka government is uh, counteracting on these issues? Lin, the question is that there is a big the... issue for child labor. How the government is working on that? 
Well, the government are trying very hard to work on that at the moment because I think many, many children over the last few weeks, we have been hearing of many more cases of, of child, um, child labour. Um, and I think what's happening is many children are not being abandoned in the orphanages, but they're being trafficked um, because families are so desperate now that they are unable to support their children in the way that they were able to um, pre-pandemic. Um, and therefore, as, as well in Sri Lanka, child marriages are, are increasing um, and, and child labour as well. Amam, there is a question from Khuraniya ji, uh, is a very senior advocate in our country. Uh, whether there is a red tapism in Sri Lanka and the child care program is suffering due to that? Is there any red tapism in Sri Lanka also? Sorry, I, I missed the first part of the question. Is there any red tapism? Arvind ji, you can ask your question directly. Arvind ji, you can put your question. Is there any red tapism? Sorry, it's echoing. I can't. I can't hear the question. <clears throat> yeah, Lynn, they want to know whether there is an administrative blockade or means like because of administrative uh, processes. Is there any problem in the child welfare system in Sri Lanka? Uh, well, I think, um, as I said, they, there is a, there's a lot of documentation and policies and laws in place, um, but there are still a lot of problems. And um, I think that, you know, there's, I think there's a lack of, um, of knowledge of actually how to how to actually implement these systems, particularly in alternative care and foster care. And that's how it's disappointing that over the last, uh, you know, since 2019, we, we haven't been able to um, continue with our training, which we were planning, um, because the, the, there, were, there was a, a great thirst and a great need for more training in, in, in many areas. and. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to resume those soon so that we can you know start getting systems up and running uh, in fact i would like to add here what lynn i would like you to explain ki wahan par wahan par child welfare system mein koi cwc ka koi concept nahi hai they only have probation officers and the orders are given by the courts which are the magistrates like they are typical magistrates to unke paas uh, Child welfare, जैसे हम लोगों ने JJB बना के, CWC बना के, वहाँ पे हमने social workers को रखा हुआ that system is not existing. So maybe Lynn, you can explore that. Okay, the orders are given by the court, and you don't have any social worker, the child welfare committee system in India that we we have, and it's the probation officer who is responsible for the whole of the province, which is a quite geographically is quite big. So maybe you can just talk about that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, from from what I understand, the probation officer would make the recommendation to a judge. Um, so the probation officer has um, has a big responsibility um, in in actually making decisions and doing research on individual children to to see what is the the best um, options for individual children, um, and then make the recommendations to the judges. But I think the system as it stands has been in place for such a long time, um, they're not always asking the right questions. And I think since the training that <clears throat> that happened in 2019, I think a lot more questions started to be answered, um, sorry, started to be asked. Um, but I'm not sure, I, I think that it's such a widespread area that uh, there's still a lot more work to be done. Okay, good. Thanks very much, Lynn. If anybody wants to ask question, you can raise your hands or you can put directly. So we are already can, running late. Can, can I ask just one simple question, one more? Yes. Lynn, yes, I would sir. like to know the role of NGOs in uh, 
Sri Lanka child welfare system. How they are? What do you think about the role of NGOs? Is it? I just want to ask you that. The role of NGOs. Yes. Um, I think that there's um, there are very much fewer foreign NGOs because of lack of funding. Um, it's very difficult to get funding for Sri Lanka. Um, I mean, most of the there's a lot. Of, you know, we there are lots of big NGOs there, and I think, you know, I think that everybody's really trying really hard especially during this pandemic and providing you know the food parcels and emergency <clears throat> supplies that families really need and i think um i think that ngos are doing a really good job at the moment and small small ngos are also trying hard to work together because of the restrictions during curfews and um so yeah, I think I think um, there's a, there's a place for a huge area of need for more NGOs actually covering more work there. And I think it's what is really necessary is actually trying to engage more NGOs in the work of alternative care, because there are very few NGOs actually working in this area and very few who actually understand the need. Okay, so the role of thank NGO you, is important you. and critical in each and every country across the world. Great. Thank you, thank so thank you. you very much, Lynn. Thank you very much. It was a nice interaction. It was a nice session. So thank you very much. Thank Have a you. good day. Thank you. For the thank opportunity. you. Have a good good day too. Bye. Thank you. thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Sandra. Bye. Thank you very much. ठीक है डॉक्टर साहब नमस्कार सब कैसे हैं बस कुशल मंगल है बढ़िया है ठीक है